As of April 2019, I was making £6,000 per month or roughly $7,250 per month doing this. Taking like a sample from a platform that I use called Splice and then programming drum samples to then build and structure a beat you would hear on the likes of the radio or on a chart or something like that. That's right, I was making the same amount per month as some CEOs at age 19 from just clicking a few buttons. It sounds like a joke, right? Or alternatively, a musician's dream. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna give you the three steps of how I was making $90,000 per year as a producer at just age 19 and how you can do the same for your music career. Let's get started. When I entered the music industry at just age 16 in 2016, one of the things that I made the biggest commitment to was selling my music as a service. Selling your music as a service defined is identifying your biggest musical skill set and then selling that on to other musicians who perhaps aren't as good at you as that particular skill set. So for example, there are plenty of talented musicians who have an incredible voice and are really good at top lining, who aren't particularly good at telling stories or evoking emotions through their songs. So what they do, and what record labels spend millions of dollars on every single year, is hiring songwriters to help them evoke more emotion into their songs, to help them tell better stories, to help them create a more unique sound to that particular artist. And as a result, you have really successful musicians who you may not have guessed actually had 20 other people writing their songs. Another example might be with producers. Producers are kind of the epitome of people that are good at selling their music as a service. Producers traditionally will charge about $2,000 per song to be able to produce your track. And they'll do everything from creating the background instrumentation all the way through to the mixing and sometimes even the mastering as well. Now, we often get it twisted in the music industry that selling your music as a service is only reserved for producers. It's only reserved for mix engineers. But what artists just like you every single day at my company are doing is selling their music as a service too. They're taking the incredible skill sets that they have at singing, at songwriting, at performing, and selling it on to people that really need it. And that's exactly what I did at 16 years old when I started out as a producer. I made a commitment to outreaching to people that needed my production and regularly messaging them on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, building relationships with them, and ultimately pitching them on my services. For you as a musician, you're probably wondering, well, how do I go about pitching my services to people? How do I know whether they're gonna even want to have what I have to offer? And at this point, it doesn't really matter. That's the honest truth. The fact is, is that you know that you already have the talent. You already know that you're incredibly skilled at what you do. It's just that you haven't put the connections together between your talent and it being a monetizable asset. And I can tell you based off of having worked with 72 musicians in 2021 alone, all you have to do is read some of our testimonials to figure out that actually this is a lot easier than it seems to be. The second thing that I focused on when I got started in the music industry at just 16 years old was outreach. I made a solid commitment every single day to messaging a targeted number of musicians, speaking to them, building relationships with them about my services and how I can really add value to their music career. You know, a lot of times when people send DMs about their music, about promoting their new song or working with somebody else, it's just spam. But what I made a commitment to at 16 was the opposite of that. I deliberately went into people's DMs, seeing how I could help them for free sometimes just simply giving away value about things that I knew and that I had built up and giving it away for free so that I could build trust, so that I could build a bond with that person and eventually be able to sign them on as a client. Now, the issue with this is that if you go on giving away stuff for free for long enough, then people are just gonna view it as a charity. Which brings me on to step number three. When I was 16 years old, one of the biggest changes that I made to my life was becoming a better salesperson. Now, unfortunately, sales has this kind of dirty affiliation with it. You know, as soon as I say sales, you probably thought of the secondhand car salesman down at your local garage. And the reality is, is that times have changed since then. Um, sales has, if you do it right, become a lot more about focusing on the other person, building relationships with them and having a genuine care about that other person and being able to see if, hey, look, if we've got a solution for you, then I'm not gonna be afraid to let you know about it. But equally, if we aren't gonna be a fit together, then I'll let you know too. And I hope that we can you know, work together in the future anyway. 
When I made a commitment to sales at 16 years old, I became a master at outreaching to people on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. But I also made a commitment to becoming incredibly good as soon as I've got that person on the phone that I know how to control every single aspect of that phone call in order for it to end in a desired result, which is them getting help and me getting my paycheck. Now, I did this continuously for up to three years. From 2016 until 2019, I built this incredible brand called DSB Beats, built up to 75,000 followers online. I was regularly raking in shit tons of money, uh, you know, just from making beats and talking to people about them and helping them make better songs. But where I went wrong is with my ego. By around May of 2019, I thought that I could charge more money. I thought that people would start coming to me. I thought that I was on top of the world and frankly, I'm so much better than what these people are paying me that I deserve more. And what happened from May until really October of 2019 was my downfall. And this is step number four. When you've got a working system and it's going your way and you're bringing in money from your music, Despite how you may not enjoy some parts of it or some tasks are more tedious than others or how you may not enjoy making content that much, as much as you do making the music, do not stop doing what works. Learn from my grave mistakes of having been on top of the world, having people call my name with all of my accolades and achievements to being a bum at the end of 2019. Do not make the same mistake that I did. Continue to do what works, ignore the noise, and focus on becoming better every single day. If you've enjoyed this video and you want to watch more, just click the like button down below, subscribe to this channel, and welcome to my channel. By the way, I've got loads of videos talking about how you can become full-time in music, following our very specific philosophy, the music business octagon. The music business octagon describes eight individual areas that I've noticed over the years have to be present within a musician's music business in order for it to be successful. And I'll bring up an image of it here now so that you can just have a pause and a quick read through. The music business octagon describes everything from knowing your own direction with your music career, all the way through to sales and marketing, all the way through to looking at your own performance and effectiveness in growing your music business. The music business octagon talks about financial responsibilities. It talks about becoming a better leader. It talks about becoming a better marketer and sales so that ultimately you can achieve your true desire of becoming full-time in music too. My name's David Sinclair Black and I'm the manager director of a company called Sinclair Media Group and it's our vision to truly reform the music industry. By 2030 we will have helped over 2 million musicians, both music artists and music producers, become full-time in their music career, earning at least £2,000 per month. This will contribute £48 billion to the world economy every single year in newfound jobs in the music industry. And if you're interested in seeing our journey over the next eight years of how, statistically speaking, we're going to help you become full-time in music, then I want you to like the video down below, subscribe, and stay tuned for more. If you're interested in seeing how we can help you become full-time in music through implementing the philosophies within that music business octagon, then you can schedule a call with me personally by clicking the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching this, and I really look forward to seeing you in the next one.